hello guys in this video we are going to learn about variables in java okay so what are variables basically so variables are nothing but a way of storing the data so variables are means for us to actually store analyze and display the data so what i mean by that let's say i was told to store someone's age in my program so uh, how will i do that one way was to one way would be to manually enter it every time I, uh, I have to use the edge but the more efficient solution would be to just define a variable named age and after this I can use this variable whenever I want throughout the code okay so what variables allow us to do is actually store some data which can which we can reuse which we can manipulate, modify, and perform a lot of operations on. So there can be a lot of usage for these variables. So that is why these are very important concepts to understand because throughout the whole course of Java, we will be using a lot of variables. Okay. So let us just see uh, first how we actually declare a variable. So the basic syntax would be something like this so we start with first of all we start with declaring a data type for the variable what data type means if data type is nothing but it defines what <coughs> defines what kind of data are we actually storing for example let us say for the age case only what would be the values of age possible so as we know generally we actually we use only numbers to represent as for example 10 15 30 and something like that okay so if we want our data type to be our uh, variable to be a number we will specify a certain data type so what are the data types provided by java so there are several of them so there is int there is char then we have string then we have double we have float and so on so if we were supposed to uh, have a variable which contains a number value then we will use int okay int allows us to store all kinds of integer value similarly if we want to store certain characters like just uh, let's just say uh, there was grades which grades ranged from starting from a to let's just say f a b c d e d a b c d e f g and something like that so so if we had grades and we uh, display them using characters so we can store such alphabets in character data type similarly if we had a set of characters basically a sentence or base or you can say a name of some person uh, a statement or something like that if we had to store a set of characters we can also store a set of numbers so for such operation we can use string and how do we identify a string so basically java identifies anything which is contained inside this double code as a string so if we write something like this xyz abc so this would be considered a string also if i write like this this should not be integer this should actually be a string okay so these double quotes identify some uh, written statement or value as a string okay so what if we wanted to store some decimal value for example we wanted to store 32.5 so to do so we can have we can use double or float okay so this is what data type means so it actually defines what kind of data are we actually storing in our variable okay now let's proceed further now the next thing that we do is we actually give a name to the variable this is how we'll actually recognize it right so if we want to, to store age let us just name it age so here i would provide the name this would be name and this would be data type and after this we can also store this is not necessary we, but you uh, know if we want to we can provide a data uh, basically a value to this variable for example let me just store 15 here okay so this will be value so example would be let me just declare integer age and 
I will store 15 in this. So this is basically how we store a variable. How we declare a variable. Okay. And there can be numerous operations which can be performed on these variables. So we are going to perform some basic operations and understand how they actually work. Okay. So let me just define two variables int x and y. And let me just give them a value 10 and let me give this value 20 okay so if i wanted to get this sum one way would be to just print out x plus y so what this plus would do it actually calculates their sum and displays them so this would be a direct way this would just add and give me the result so this would give me 30 now another a more efficient way this is a very short program but for a large program there might be uh, other uses of this sum so not only for printing purpose but my, uh, we might need the sum of these two somewhere else and we might need uh, their sum for several tasks so a better way would be to store their sum in a variable so we can use it again and again so that is why variables are very essential in any program so we can have the reusability function okay now if i do this i can just print out some and the answer would be the exact same now this sum is very see we have 30 now this now let us discuss other operations let us just perform the perform a multiplication so in our math classes if we had two variables x and y and we wanted to find a product what we did we just wrote x y so this x y should give me product let us just print and see what happens okay then i will explain why it is happening so if i print prod let me just comment this out So what you will see is it is we'll actually get an error okay so it says we cannot find the symbol which means this x y is actually considered as a variable to java okay this will not be considered as an operation so what we need to do is we need to actually provide the multiplication operator which in this case should be the star okay now this would actually return me 200 so 20 into 10 should be 200 so we got 200 now I'm going to write three more operations and we're going to see how they actually work okay so here uh, i'm going first of all i'm going to write 8 divided by b so we have x y so i'm going to write x divided by y now i'm going to write two more operations so second one i would write as y divided by x and the third is an operator that, that i would like to show everyone is that it it is called as modulo and the function that it performs i am going to explain it after we see what the output is okay so let us see what the output is so as we can see we have gotten 0 2 and 10 okay so what is actually happening here so as uh as, um what can you say as a gen generic way if we see it so let us see so if we divide 10 by 20 in math math maths so what will be the answer of this it will be 0.5 right so, and y by x should be 20 by 10 so this should be equal to 2 and this is a modulo so th the function of this is unknown until now so i'm going to describe it later on but x by y should be equal to 0 0.5 but what we are getting here it's not actually 0 0.5 we are actually getting 0 here so how is this happening and why is this happening so x by y it is not only very different to 0 0.5 it's not even the round value of 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 rounded value should be like 1 
but it's not even rounding it so why is it returning zero so zero is actually the quotient of the division of these two so if we divide 10 by 20 so what would be the quotient here the quotient would be zero okay so this division operator actually returns the quotient only the quotient so it would always be an integer so even if we multiply a larger uh, larger number by something that it doesn't doesn't divide by so for example for 100 what would be the quotient it would be two. okay so what we can see from here is that this this returns a the uh, quotient now what is the modulo operator so modulo operator is basically the other part that is the remainder okay so if we divide 10 by 20 what would the remainder the remainder would be 10 right so 10 modulo 20 actually represents what would be the remainder if 10 is divided by 20 so this would give me 10 so as we see here our output was 10 so this is how this operator works now suppose we, we have to perform a larger operation something like this suppose we have to perform operation like x y upon x plus y so let us write it so i am going to make a variable and name it expression okay so let us see so i am going to make a variable name it expression and i am going to write the expression here so that was x into y divided by x plus y so what this should give us our x was 10 y was 20 and we have x plus y that is 30 so this is 200 upon 30 so this is basically around 6 so as we know in java we, we only get the quotient by using divide operator so this would give me actually 6 so the output should be 6 now let us see what this actually gives us so if i print this out if i print this expression out we'll see that we don't actually get 6 okay so we are actually getting 40 so this is the product so let me just do this now we'll actually see we get 40 so why we are getting 40 so if we see here in java every operator has a certain priority okay so priority means which operator would be operated first okay so division and multiplication have equal priority but their priority is greater than the priority of addition and subtraction and the uh, priority of subtraction and addition are equal okay so if uh, for expression that we have written here that is x into y let me just analyze it here so the expression that we wrote was like this right so let us evaluate this so so as i uh, explained here the the priority of this one is the price of division is greater than addition so that is what happened here so we have x into y so what is x into y so x into y is 10 to 20 is basically 200 so now after this we would not actually add them but the division would happen happen first so it would divide them so 200 divided by 10 okay so x was 10 right yes x was 10 and then we add y to it so y was 20 so if we do this we get 20 plus 20 and that is why we are getting 40 right so to actually get the output we want that is 6 what we have to do is we have to use brackets what this would do since bracket have highest priority so brackets would actually uh, execute them individually so if we do this we would get our required answer that is 6 so we should always keep this in mind that is we are getting 6 so this should always be kept in mind that is the uh, priority of the operator so i hope the explanation was pretty clear and if you like the video 
don't forget to subscribe it so i'll see you guys in the next video thank you